All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just reset all of my progress here. You already saw that I did complete some of it, but I'm just gonna wipe this slate clean and get started right away, just as if I were to come here and do this on my first day. We're gonna start with the introduction to basic HTML and HTML5. So this section is just an introduction section, basic HTML and HTML5. HTML is hypertext markup language. It's markup language used to describe the structure of a web page. It uses a special syntax or notation to organize and give information about the page to the browser. Elements usually have opening and closing tags that surround and give it meaning for content. For example, there are different tag options in place around the text to show whether it's a heading, paragraph, or a list. Here's the example. H1 would be one of your heading tags. P tag is a paragraph text tag. And then you have your OLs, which is ordered list, and your LIs, which are your, your list items in the ordered list. You also have ULs, which are unordered lists, which show up as bullet points. Ordered lists will show up as a one, two, three, as they're gonna show you here in the, uh, the rest of this section, just to kind of give you an idea of what HTML does. HTML is gonna be one of the first things that you're gonna to have to learn when it comes to being a web developer and responsive web design, so that's why they give you this quick breakdown here. So let's go on to the first lesson. The first lesson of HTML5. Say hello to HTML elements. Welcome to Free Code Camp's HTML coding challenges. These will walk you through web development step by step. First, you will start building a simple web page using HTML, and you can edit the code in your code editor, which is embedded into this web page. Free Code Camp, you can pretty much do most of their curriculum right here in the built-in you know, embedded text editor that they have, and you'll see your results right here on the side. So we'll write our code here, and you'll see the results here on the side. So for the elements are always gonna have, or most elements are gonna have an opening and closing tag. Some elements don't require a closing tag and can be have just a single tag to represent it, but we're not gonna get into that right now. We're just gonna say the opening tag looks like this, and you got an H1, and then the closing tag looks like this. You can see the slash is what's closing off that H1 tag there. And like I said, and like I said, the only difference is the, the forward slash in the opening bracket of the closing tag. So here you see it says, hello, the challenge for this is gonna be to pass this, you need to change your H1 to say, hello world. So right here at the end of hello, we're gonna just put a space here and it's gonna say world, hello world. And we're just gonna run the test. I passed. We're gonna submit and go to the next challenge on that. All right, next question here. Basic HTML5 headline with the H2, headline with, Headline with the H2 element. Over the next few lessons, we'll build an HTML5 cat photo web app piece by piece. The H2 element that you will be adding in the next step will add a level two heading to your web page. This element tells the browser about the structure of your website. H1 elements are often used as the main heading, while H2 elements are generally used for subheadings. There are also H3, H4, H5, and H6, and that's it, you're not gonna get H7. That's as far as they go. Uh, and those all indicate levels of subheadings. Add an H2 tag that says cat photo app to create the second HTML element below your hello world. So we're gonna open it with a less than, we're gonna do H2, close, close that off if I can type and hit the right spot, and then we're gonna say, what is it, cat, what is it, photo app? Oh, I hit the cat locks. Cat photo and then we're gonna close it off. Don't forget our forward slash H2, and then there you have it, that should do it. Now you see we added this here, cat photo app. All right, let's get to the next one. Let's see if we can get through these kind of quickly, I don't know. I'm gonna let these videos go as long as they need to. I'm gonna try not to edit them too much. They're gonna be as close to live coding without actually being live coding, because I do wanna keep them you know, seamless, so I will edit them just so you know, it's you're not sitting here watching me fumble around or mistype too much or just just get stuck on something. If I do get stuck on stuff, I'm gonna say that I got stuck on it and let people know that I'm legitimately stuck on something because I'm not gonna know everything that I come across here and that's perfectly fine. You're probably not gonna know a lot of it and it's okay to get stuck on these things and if I have to Google stuff, I'll show you that I Google something and find the solution 
the way that Free Code Camp recommends doing it, and which is you know you search around and then you ask if you need to and all those good things. So let's just continue now. The next part is going to be inform with the paragraph element. P elements are the preferred element for paragraph text on websites. P is short for paragraph. You can create a paragraph element like this with your opening and closing brackets there. You have, I am a P tag, and they close it off with the forward slash there and the closing P tag. So create a P element below your H2 element and give it a hello paragraph. Note, as a convention, all HTML tags are written in lowercase. For example, P tag is gonna be written like this and not like this with capitalization. So it looks like it's already here which is kind of odd because you guys saw me wipe everything. So I'm not sure why that just gave it to me or did it? Oh, you know what? It didn't actually, actually it did say create it, right? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Hopefully that's just a fluke on that one. The next one is gonna be fill in the blank with the placeholder text. Web developers traditionally use lorem ipsum text as a placeholder text. The lorem ipsum text is randomly scraped from the famous passage of Cicero of ancient Rome. Lorem ipsum text has been used as placeholder text by typesetters since the 16th century and this tradition continues on to the web. Well, five centuries is long enough. We're building a photo app for cats so let's do something called kitty ipsum. All right, replace the p tag with these few words in the kitty text. So this one's pretty straightforward. We're just going to copy this bad boy here and then just replace the text that's in here. Make sure it's within your brackets. If you, if you cut one of these brackets out by accident, you're gonna have a problem, but just copy that in there, and then now you see the text shows up on the page there. We can pass our test and go on to the next challenge. All right, some more basic HTML5. On to the next one. Uncomment the HTML. Commenting is a way that you can leave comments for other developers with your code without affecting the results on the output and displayed and they're not displayed to the end user. Commenting is also a convenient way to make code inactive without having to delete it entirely. You can comment HTML like this. This is a syntax. It's a less than sign, exclamation mark, hyphen, 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 hyphen at the end and then the closing tag. So this is how you're gonna comment stuff. This wants me to uncomment all of these elements. And like they say, developers use comment all the times. So I'm often commenting out stuff that I don't want to run because I'm trying to test different things on the code that I'm working on. And you'll be getting used to commenting. It's not just to mention things on your code or leave notes for people. It's, it's often used more for, you know, like they said, being able to comment stuff out without having to delete it just in case you have to go back it's still there so we're going to uncomment this and we're just going to delete that one there and we're going to delete this one here and you can see now everything shows back up as it should and we can run the test and that should pass so let's go on to the next challenge we're kind of speeding through this um like i said i'm not going to edit too much out of these videos just so you can kind of see how i do it in real time and don't get discouraged if you feel like this is going too quick because the truth is I'm experienced and this stuff is stuff that I know pretty well. So when I get into sections that I still struggle with, you'll probably see these videos go on a little bit longer and I'm gonna show myself actually struggling through the stuff that I do get stuck on. But HTML5 and CSS and a lot of the stuff, unless it's gonna be really you know, stuff that I just don't know about um, within, HTML and CSS and grid and all the other things that are going to be coming up. I don't see myself getting too stuck, but who knows? All right. So now comment out the HTML. What's going on here? I feel like I just did this. Comment out. Oh, so now it's telling me to comment the HTML. Okay. That's weird. I don't know. I, I could have sworn I, I reloaded this and I'm not really sure uh or i i thought i reset all of this and i'm not really sure why it's still doing this hold on what's coming out your h1 element your p tag but not your oh okay there you go see i just did something silly there because i didn't read what it wanted me to do so it just wants me to comment out uh 
so it wants me to comment this one out so there's often a lot of shortcuts for text editors uh if you're on mac command and the uh the comment or the comment button is usually the forward slash so if you do that or control forward slash on windows that'll just comment out different blocks of code so that's a shortcut that i always use so that's what i'm going to be doing if not you see that these items are typed in front of it so you can you can basically do that and type those in so if i went here and showed you i typed the bang whoops and there there you go and now i think i can pass that so just a little shortcut might make your life easier i know that they have some of these shortcuts here on their integrated text editor so that's kind of nice so i'll try to be using some of those but i will mention when i'm using those so no one gets lost or feel like i did something that's just like hey like what happened there so delete html elements our phone doesn't have much vertical space let's remove the unnecessary elements so we can start building our cat photo app Delete your H1 element to simplify the view. All right. All right, there we go. That guy got deleted. All right, what's this? Introduction to HTML5 elements. HTML5 introduces more descriptive HTML tags. This includes the main, the header, footer, nav, video, article, and section, and others. These tags give a descript ah, these tags give a descriptive structure to your HTML, make your HTML easier to read, and help with search engine optimization, SEO, and accessibility. The main HTML5 tag helps search engines and other developers find the main content of your page. Example usage, a main element with two child elements nested inside. So you have your main here, and it's nesting an h1 and a p tag here and then we close off the main there note many of the new html5 tags and their benefits are covered in the applied accessibility section so they'll be covering that more in depth in a in a future section right now they're just giving you an idea of you know html5 elements and just get your feet wet a little but they'll cover them more in, in a future section so the challenge for this one is create a P element after the existing P element with the following Kitty Ibsen per per jump. <laughs> All right, we're gonna copy that block and then we're gonna create a main element and then nest the two P tags in the main element. So I'm guessing we're gonna just go right here. Oops, we're gonna go main and close that off. And then I had already copied the Kitty Ipsum, so I'm gonna paste that there. Then I'm gonna close off this P tag, and then I'm gonna close off the main here. And then if you guys want to see a little bit better nesting there, I'll do some breakpoints so you can see how it's structured. For the most part, I don't know if I can format this. If, oh, it does have a formatter. It looks terrible because of the way that um, it's scrunched in here. I guess it has a lot of the VS Code commands, so if you wanna, auto format stuff on VS Code, you do Alt, Shift, and F, and it'll format stuff. It looks funny here. I'm not gonna mess around with it. I'm not gonna try to format too much stuff. Just, uh, you know, I'll get, I'll, maybe I'll do a video on HTML nesting and using a prettier or a formatter that just does it for you because honestly, it's a lot easier to do that. And having stuff that's not formatted properly can be a real pain sometimes to find where something's messed up if you missed a tag or something. So it's really good to format your code nicely so you can make it easier to read. Uh, add, add images to your website. All right, so let's see what's next. Add images to your website. You can add images to your website by using the IMG tag. And it's just the image tag is, you know, nobody really calls it IMG tag or element. They call them elements here, I call them tags. I might be using that incorrectly, but I always called them tags. And I think that that's ter regular terminology. And point to a specific images URL using the source attribute. An example for the following would be image source and then the URL and still nested in that. Notice that this doesn't have a closing tag. You can do an image tag without having a closing tag. You can omit that. And that's what they're gonna say here is that image is self-closing. You don't need a closing tag. All image elements must use, all, all image elements must have an alt attribute 
This text inside an alt attribute is used for screen readers to provide accessibility and display if the image is, fails to load. So basically the alt tag is just gonna tell you what the picture is. It shouldn't be something that computers read. You don't wanna write this how you'd write an HTML class. You don't wanna do this in camel case or hyphen separated. You want to write this as you would read it if you were reading it on paper like a normal person. Uh, so if the image is purely decorative, using an empty alt is the best practice. Ideal uh, alt attributes should not contain special characters, just what I was saying. And here's an example for an alt, which is a business cat wearing a necktie. That's what this alt tag should say. So let's try to add an image to our website. Here is the challenge. Within the main element, insert an image element before the existing P elements and set the source attribute to point to this URL. So I'm just gonna take this URL, copy that now, and then I say they want it here, so I'm gonna put, I keep hitting the wrong, the wrong one, it's driving me nuts, but IMG, and then we're gonna put the source tag. I, I'm trying to type too fast and then I mess it up, and then we're gonna copy that, and oh, there's our kitty cat now, and then self-clothing, clo self-closing, and since the image is self-closing, there you have it. So that's pretty much it. I think that's all I have. Oh, it, wait, where's my, my source text? Or I guess it wants me to, don't forget to give your, okay. Uh, so we're gonna give it our own alt tag here and we're gonna, I forgot to add the alt tag. Uh, I misread that again. So for the alt tag, we're just gonna say cute kitty. And let's run that. And there you go. I didn't notice the other cat. I would have said cute kitties. But let's just move on to the next challenge here. What's this? Uh, all right, so this section is gonna be linked to external pages with anchor elements. So the A tag, otherwise known as the anchor element, is used to link content outside of your web page. The A elements use a destination called an href attribute. They also need anchor text, for example, Here's the A tag, which your href, which points to where you want it to go. And then this is gonna be the clickable link that shows up on the screen that will say, this links to freecodecamp.org. Then your browser will display, this links to freecodecamp.org and will take them to that URL. So we're gonna create an A tag element here that links to free, what is it? Freephotoapp.com or freecatphotoapp.com. And where are we gonna put it? And it has cat photo anchors. And does it say where it wants us to put it? No, so I'm just gonna put it at the end of the P tag here. So A, do your href, and then it's always gonna be equal signs. Uh, best practice is to use double quotes, and we're gonna drop in that URL there, close it off, and what was our, our text that they wanted? Let me just close the anchor tag completely, and then it says cat photos. And then that should do that. There you go, simple as that, easy peasy. HTML is pretty easy for the most part, but when you're just getting started, it's not, it's confusing, it's complicated, it's hard. I call it easy, I whiz right through this. I have been doing this for many years, but when I first started doing this, I had a hard time with it. So if you're having a hard time and you're watching this video and you're trying to do this stuff too, Rest assured, one day, if you keep this up, you'll be just as good as me and you'll zip right through this stuff. So as you can see, Free Code Camp is a nonprofit. They they work off of donations and if if you donate, you know, it'll go to a good cause. And I'm not gonna donate right now. I should donate, but I'm not for the purpose of this video. I'm just gonna keep moving through this, but just give you a heads up if you wanted to donate, you could. And let me just keep going. So. So to link to internal sections of a page with anchor tags, the A anchor element can also be used to create internal links and jump from different sections within a web page. To create an internal link, you assign to create an internal link, you assign a links href attribute to the hash symbol plus the value of the ID attributes for the elements that you want to internally link to. Use further down on the page, then you'll need to add the same element and I, I, I got stuck reading that. So basically it's just telling you to 
anchor it, you wanna give it an ID on another element. So if you wanted to anchor to the heading, then you give that ID inside of the heading, the ID attribute is unique, an ID should only be used on one element on the page. You can use classes for multiple elements, but you usually wanna keep an ID unique, and that's why they use IDs to link between sections inside the screen with the anchors. So let's just see what the challenge is here. Change your external link to an internal link by changing the href attribute to the footer and the text from the cat photos to jump to the bottom. Remove the target blank attribute from the anchor tag since this causes the link to document in the this causes the link to open in a new tab and then add an ID attribute to the value of the footer as footer and put that at the bottom. All right. So where is it? So here's the footer. Let me just add that ID real quick. ID equals double quotes. And we're going to call that footer. And then we're going to take off the target blank. Target blank, as, as that text said, it will open this in a new tab. And we don't want it to do that. And then we're going to switch this here for footer. If I can type footer and then that should do it. Oh, what did I miss? The A tag should jump to the, to the href attribute. Ah, I forgot. So IDs, you got to do a hash for ID. Um, classes are, are dot. I missed that. My bad. What? The A tag should say, ah, oh. see, I'm just messing up. I'm just messing up. So jump to all right, that should do it now. There we go. All right, so there you have it. I I should try to take my time a little bit more with these so and not just speed right through this stuff. Let's move on to the next one. All right, what's the next one? Nest an anchor element within a paragraph. You can nest links within other text elements. All right, so it wants you to put an A tag inside of the P tag here. Is that what I'm understanding here? Yeah, it just looks like that's all it's doing. So it's showing you that you can kind of incorporate different elements within each other on the HTML. So here you have an A tag that has a link inside of a P tag. And that's pretty much what this is saying here. For this example and this part, we're going to nest the existing A element within a new P element. The new paragraph should have text that says view more cat photos where cat photos is the link is a link and the rest is plain text. Okay. So, so nest the existing. All right. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and cut that. Is that what it's doing? And then we're gonna make a new P tag here. And we're gonna, I'm just gonna close this off first. And then what I just cut, I'm gonna paste that back in there. And then we're gonna leave cat photos like that. And we're gonna add, what was it? View more, view, view more. view more cat photos with the space and then let's just run the test there and that's that. All right, next one is make make dead links using the hash symbol. Oh, yeah. I'm offline. I swear I'm not offline. Uh, sometimes you want to add an A element to your website before you know where it links to. This also comes in handy when you're changing the behavior using JavaScript, which we'll talk about later. Uh, the current value of the href attribute links and points to the free, free cat photo apps. Uh, replace the href with the hash. And yep, so we're just going to replace this text here with the hash. And then we do that. And now when you click on that, oh, shoot, it shouldn't have taken me anywhere. Did it not save? Okay. No, it's still showing the uh, past. It was showing the URL there. I'm just going to leave it because I don't want to jump to that page again. I guess maybe it didn't register in time, but 
I changed it out. Well, maybe now it won't work. Yeah, there you go. So now, now it's got the hash in there so you can see it actually doesn't click. It just didn't update for some reason. All right, on to the next one. Turn an image into a link. You can make elements into links by nesting them within an A element. Nest your image within an A element. Here's an example. You have your A element right here, and then you have your image with the source and the link and the alt text where it's going there. And it said, remember to use your hash in your A for the href in order to keep it a dead link. For this challenge, or for this, for this section, we're gonna place the existing image element within A. Uh, a tag, let's see, once you've done this, hover over it and image with your cursor should be a normal pointer. Okay, so they're just saying that, like when you hover on a link, you see how it turns into the pointer finger. That's what should happen to this image if you nest that properly. So we're just gonna add the A tag here and we're gonna do href equals double quotes hash double quotes and close that bad boy off and then go to the end of this one and close this a tag off here and then that should do that yep there we go all right we're halfway done all right that's not too bad i feel like i'm making pretty good time on this i've had a couple hiccups but hopefully it's not that bad all right basic html and html5 uh all right, so let's create a bulleted unordered list. HTML5 has special elements for creating unordered list or bullet styled list. Unordered lists start with the UL element followed by a, any number of LI elements and follow. finally an unordered list is closed with the UL and the forward slash before it, just like every other element that can be closed in HTML. So we're gonna create a bulleted list and we're gonna remove the last two, so what's it say? Remove the last two P elements to create an unordered list of the three things that cats, that the cats love at the bottom of the page. All right, so I might just, so remove the last two P elements, check, and then we're gonna create an unordered list UL and then uh, forgot to close that one off. Uh, oh, and just list. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So what what are three things cats like? We'll start with the first one, and we'll we'll do catnip, right? I think that's one word. We'll close that off. Li, and then what's what's another thing that cats like? Uh, I don't know. Uh, sitting on keyboards. I'm not even going to capitalize it. And what's 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 one more thing that cats like? Let's just let's just keep it simple. Let's let's go with milk. Cats love milk, right? You always you always hear that cats love milk. So, let's just close that off. And there you go. We got three things. Cat nips, sitting on keyboards, and milk. We'll run a test. Boom. That's done. Let's go to the next section. You know, I promise that I'm gonna donate something, not just to get this off the screen, but it's something I've been meaning to do. I just haven't used Free Code Camp in a while, so I kind of forgot about it. Uh, let's see here, create an ordered list. All right, so for an ordered list, you wanna just do an OL. I think I mentioned this earlier in the video when they kind of talked about the list, and this will add numbers to it. Uh, with CSS, you can also remove the, you know, styling so it would it you can change the bullet points if you want and you can also remove the numbers but you should separate them out even though that you could remove the styles from them because they are different types of lists so you want to have them you so you want to have so you want to use the appropriate ones when you should uh this is gonna a numbered list uh garfield sylvester and then create an order list from the top three things that cats hate the most okay so what do cats hate the most uh so we're gonna do ol and we're gonna close that bad boy and i'm just gonna close it off here and then just create my break so i don't forget about it and then as you can see this is kind of how you nest html if you're using a text editor like vs code or this integrated text editor if you break in the right place like you're supposed to it'll set up your cursor where it should be for the next you know indentation that you should have. So then we're gonna do li, you know, I, I wonder if this has Emmet. Uh, no, it doesn't. And it probably shouldn't because Emmet is an autocompleter for HTML that's pretty popular. And I was like, oh yeah, they probably don't wanna have that on here because why would they want to use 
Emmett for someone who's trying to actually learn and type this stuff out. So what do cats hate? They hate water, right? I, I always think cats hate water. Uh, I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, so if you want a shortcut to create another line, you can do Alt and Shift and then the down or the up arrow and it'll create that line in the direction that you want it to go. So the, that's a shortcut that I just hit right now and that created the other line of whatever line that I was on. So that's Alt, Shift, and down or up. Uh, so what's something else cats hate? Uh, I don't. I really don't know much about cats. Uh, not sitting on keyboards. You can see I'm not very creative. Uh, what, what's another thing? I, I can't think of anything. Something else a cat hates. Uh, I don't know. Uh, a dirty cat box. Uh, all right. Whatever. I'm just trying to... Fill, fill it in just so you can get an idea. And you can see over here that it it broke it down into one, two, and three ordered as it's supposed to be from you know how I entered it in. It added the numbers for me. So the next we're gonna so next we're gonna create a text field. Uh, let's create a web form. Input are elements that are convenient ways to get input from your user. So input type text is gonna make a text field. So we're gonna create an input element below our list. So then we're just gonna do an indentation there and then you just tab for indentation or you can use spaces if you're a weirdo. <laughs> just kidding. There's always that debate of tab versus spaces, but uh, tabbing is probably just fine. Honestly, you, you probably, uh, if you're working on an application, it's probably gonna compile it down to tabs or spaces or one or the other. So it doesn't really matter which one you use. So now you can see there's a nice little text field right here. And again, everything that we're doing is going to be showing up here on the side. So you can actually see what you're doing as you're doing it. All right, we're 60% of the way done here. And real quick, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button. Comment below if you feel that I'm going too fast or too slow. This is going to be my first video of this series. And I only assume that I'm going to get better at them. So I do apologize if this one's going to be the worst of them all. Uh, with time, they'll get better. So make sure that you, you give me some feedback so I know what I can do to improve since I plan on doing a bunch of these. All right, what's this next one? Add a placeholder text to the text field. Placeholder text, uh, okay, so placeholder text is basically the text that you see inside text areas on form fields that you enter on the web that aren't really words there and as soon as you start typing they go away. So this is gonna be to add placeholder. So then you're really just gonna type in placeholder here within your tag and close that off like that. And then what is it supposed to be? Uh, this, so we'll just say text goes here. And then now you can see it updated, text goes here. I can, If I start typing it's gonna go away. If I delete you're gonna still see it there. So. Let's see, oh, what's it supposed to say? Dang it, <laughs> I really should read these better. <laughs> so that's what I was supposed to put in there. I, I figured they wanted something special, but I was just kind of zooming through it. So there's your placeholder text for that. And let's see what they want us to do next. So they want us to create a form element. So form, form elements usually wrap forms. So like that, when you have a submit button or you're targeting certain elements within a form, you can, you can wrap all of them inside a form tag and then that, lets the, then that lets the HTML tell you that, hey, this is all one whole form and all these elements are supposed to be considered as a group. And that's pretty much what that's saying there. So we're gonna want to nest the existing input element inside the form tag. So we're just gonna wrap this around in a form tag. So then we're gonna do form, Oh, shoot, if I can type, where's my M? There's my M. So we're gonna do form and then we're just gonna go to the end of this and do a new line and then do form here and then we're just gonna close that off. The right thing to do would be to indent this guy here just so it looks good and it's readable and then, ah, dang it. <laughs> what did I forget? So to the action, so I got action, I have to add that URL, I missed the action, my bad. So we're gonna add action to the form there. Oh, I'm just all over the place. There. What, that didn't copy? So there you go, that looks off. Uh, I got too many quotes. So 
There you go. All right. So I should just really start reading these a little bit better. So maybe that if, if I'm going too fast on that aspect, make sure you let me know because I, I feel like I might be and I talk 100 miles a minute. So I apologize. All right, the next section, we're gonna add a submit button to this. So now the submit button is gonna tell the form when it's ready to be submitted and then based off of the action that is in the form tag, it's probably just gonna direct us to that. You'll, you'll often do this for when you're submitting forms. That action will many times make calls to the database or to the back end to execute something. So that's you know post requests and different things like that, which I'm not gonna get into, but that's the idea of why they're teaching you about actions and, and form elements and submit buttons. So now we're just gonna add a submit button inside of the form to do a button. It's the same opening and closing, greater than, less than signs, and then we're gonna do type, and it's gonna be type button, or submit, type submit, yep, sorry. If it's a non-submit button, you would just do button, but if it's a submit button, you'll you'll add the type submit, then we're gonna close it off, and what do they want it to be called? They just want it to be called submit. See, this time I read it because I felt that I had been messing that up too much, so. And then we're gonna just close the button. Now you see that there's a button here, and that should do it. All right, so use HTML5 to require a field. So if you mark something as required, that will make that field have to be filled in before you're allowed to submit a form. This is form validation. This is very common in a lot of, on a lot of websites. I'm sure you've had plenty of forms that you filled out that you have required fields that then turn red or yell at you when they're not filled in. So that's what this is gonna have us do here. It's gonna have us enter in that, uh, that, that, I can't remember what I'm gonna say. It's gonna have this, so that's what this is gonna do here. It's gonna have us mark something required so then it will validate against the form. So to make your text input a required field so that the user can't submit the form without completing this field, then try blah, blah, blah. All right, so basically it's just saying type required here and you should just be able to do that and run the test and did I not, oh, dang it. <laughs> I put it on the wrong element. I put it on the button. It needs to go on the input up here. So we can put it at the end of it. Let's just put it at the end of this. Really, that doesn't necessarily matter, the ordering too much. Um, it's it's more of a preference thing. In some cases, like on Angular, I know if I do an ng model change, I need to do that after uh, the ng model, but that's beyond any lessons we're gonna learn here uh, and probably specific to Angular there. All right, so create a set of radio buttons. All right, so we're gonna learn about radio buttons. You can use radio buttons for questions where a user is only given one answer out of multiple options. Radio buttons are a type of input. Each of your radio buttons can be nested, nested within its own label element by wrapping an input element inside of a label element. It will automatically associate the radio button to that input and label element surrounding it. All related radio buttons should have the same name, this is really important, uh, attribute to create a radio button group. By creating a radio button group, selecting any single radio button will automatically deselect the other buttons within the same group, ensuring only one answer is provided to the user, or by the user, sorry. Uh, here's an example of a radio button. You have your label, you have your input type radio, and the name. So here is your name, indoor, outdoor, right? This is considered best practice to set a for attribute on your label element within the value. So the, yes, this is really important, especially when it comes to accessibility because it helps people who need to tab through and find things on, on a page. They also know what labels are being read to them that associate with what fields they're selecting. Uh, that might not be exactly what they're talking about here, but just as a side note, it's really good to let the user know what label is associated with what input they're they're selecting when they uh, you know have to use a screen reader or tab if they're not able to use a mouse and things like that. Mm, add a pair of radio buttons to your form, each nested with its own label element one should have the option for indoor and the other should have the option for outdoor both should share the name attribute indoor outdoor 
to create a radio group. Uh, and I'm assuming it needs to go in here. So I do label and then the label is going to be four and we're going to do this one's going to be indoor and then we're going to close this bad boy off and then we're going to do an input here. indoor sorry if I don't type that fast and we're gonna do type radio for a radio button uh, I forgot to put my quotes around it and then just fix that and then name also with text editors if you uh, highlight something and you want to wrap it in quotes or brackets I know VS code does it I'm always gonna be referring to text editors uh, as a group, but I'm always going to be talking about doing stuff with in VS Code because that's the text editor I use. So in VS Code, you can wrap stuff uh, by highlighting it and then add quotes around it by just selecting the quotes that you want to add and not have to like go to each side individual because uh, that's kind of annoying if you had to do that. So this name is going to be indoor outdoor, right? Ah, hyphen out. Close that off and then we're gonna whoa hold on hold on what's going on here all right there we go okay so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna add uh indoor ah I cannot type indoor and we shouldn't need to add a another one to that so I am just gonna copy this whole block because we're gonna be using this again. I'm gonna be doing my keyboard shortcut, but if you wanted to, you could literally copy and then paste. Well, let's just copy and paste it. At the end of it here, uh, I didn't close off my label. So let me close off my label first and then copy this and paste it at the end there. And then, God, this drives me nuts that it's all it looks like that because it's supposed to look like this, but since the screen is small and it's trying to accommodate for everything that's here, it's making the indentation look off and that just bugs me. And then, so we were gonna make this one outdoor. And then, so if you hold down Alt and double click on items, you can, you can select multiple items and then type like that, which is pretty nice in VS Code. So, and then this is gonna be outdoor. And then I think this should be it. There you go. Easy peasy, right? And as you can see behind here, you have the indoor, outdoor, and the submit button for those radios that we just entered there. Ah, so create a set of checkboxes. Forms commonly use checkboxes for questions that may have more than one answer. Checkboxes are a type of submit. Ah, checkboxes are a type of input. Each of your checkboxes can be nested within its own label element by wrapping an input element inside of the knit label element and it will automatically associate it with that checkbox. Uh, all related checkbox inputs should have the same name, just like radios, and is considered best practice to explicitly define the relationship between a checkbox input and its corresponding label by setting a for attribute very similar to the radio button, right? All right, all of this is very, very similar. And here's an example of a checkbox. You have your label, you have your input, type checkbox and the name, you give it a, a, a value for that label so it has some readable text next to it. And then we're just gonna do this. So add your, uh, to your form, add three checkboxes. Each checkbox should be nested within its own label. All three should share the name attribute personality. All right, so, I'm gonna type it out. Honestly, the best way would be to, <laughs> to copy and paste this, but I'm gonna crunch this up a little bit because it's just driving me nuts. Uh, I, I can't do it. I can't do it because it's not gonna be able to show you guys enough on the side there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and create my own one from scratch first, and then I'm gonna just copy and paste it. It looks like it put an automatic break tag in there, but let's go ahead and start with the label. And we're gonna, I'm gonna close that label off early this time. I don't like 
it doesn't auto complete here because I think that's just because they want you to learn and they want you to type it out and they want you to make the error of you know forgetting to close a tag but that can be really annoying when you forget to close a tag and you know text editors often auto complete when you type in the beginning of you know when you type in the the opening tag many times it'll it'll auto complete the closing tag i know that's a feature you can set or or unset in many text editors and vs code so i'm just used to that so when i type in a opening tag and the closing tag isn't there it's, it throws me off because i i you know this is for learning purposes it's good but it's not <laughs> it's not something i'm used to i'm not used to closing the tags off anymore because my my uh my setup doesn't have that. So uh, so I gotta add the checkboxes and then, uh, so what is it? It's gonna be all personality. Uh, I, I, I hate when they make you come up with stuff because I have a harder time coming up with stuff. So I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna just, just, uh, just copy what they have here. It says loving, I'm gonna steal that one as, as the first one. And basically I'm just copying the example that they have up here. So if you if you're struggling, remember that many of the times they're going to give you a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, oh shoot. I, uh, I hit the wrong button. Dang it. I'm crashing and burning. OK, so input here. Uh, we're going to do loving. And then we're going to close it off. The oh, it doesn't need it. We're in the label. Duh. All right. So we're going to go loving. And we're gonna say, uh, I got this all messed up, sorry, my bad. I'm gonna cut this out. That's supposed to go in the label. And then I am supposed to, in this input, we're gonna do type, we're gonna do checkbox. And then we're gonna do, what is it? Uh, for the ID, since I labeled that top one, loving, we're gonna, call this one the same and now you can see the check mark there on loving for the one that's underneath here it looks kind of funny because it's hard to see because the way that it's laid out it's just pure HTML so there's no styles right now and that's why it kind of looks the way it looks but you can see that first one's there I'm gonna copy and paste this section and I'm gonna copy paste and paste and then you can make all of these different you can see them there loving we're going to change this one to i don't know s sassy yeah cats are sassy right so we're going to call that one sassy we'll capitalize the actual one that you see there and then i don't know what what can we do uh i don't know well, brave can a cat be brave aren't they supposed to be scaredy cats i don't know we'll just call that one brave and so now we got love and sassy and brave. You can see I did my highlighting of multiples with the alt and then double clicking on them. So that's something that you can do to make your life a little easier. So you have loving, sassy and brave all right there. Oh, what did I, oh, ah, dang it. I forgot the name. So we're just gonna select a bunch here. So I'm holding down alt and I'm clicking where I want it, clicking where I want it. And then now I'm gonna type in name equals personality all right then there we go so i gave them all the same name 82 we're almost done look at that easy peasy right use the value attribute with the radio buttons and check boxes uh when a form gets submitted the data is sent to the server and indicates the entries for the options selected input type radio and check boxes report their values from the value attribute that's right so you have to add a uh, value attribute many times. This, this can be anything. It can be a number. It can be the whatever code they use to save the database. It, it really could be pretty much anything that you want to put in there as long as it's, it's something that's valid like a string or a number. Uh, here you have two radio buttons. When a ra user submits, the indoor option is selected from the form and it's going to be indoor and from the name of the values you want to put indoor in the input so give each radio button and check mark a value attribute and use the input label uh text in lowercase for that so basically oh this this is so 
it's killing me the way that it's formatted because it's breaking all funky and it's kind of hard to read, um, which is something that I'm not really fond of because I feel that it makes it harder to read the HTML than it should. And I don't want to zoom out too far and then have it like microscopic to where you can't see it in the video. So I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. But with that said, we're going to give the input values here. We're going to, I'm just going to highlight multiple rows uh, using the alt button, you know, uh, the alt key and the clicker. That's just an easier way of doing this. And then I can give all of them an attribute of value. You can go down one by one if you don't want to use shortcuts. But I like using shortcuts, so I added them all to that. And now I am going to just copy the ID for each one of those. And I wonder if I can do something super cool. I think you can. Let me copy all these and see if it'll work. All right, I'm going to copy all these and then let's see if I can make some magic happen here. Watch, this is going to paste all six of them into each line. Hey, it worked. Look at that. Voila. Alt and the mouse are your, are your best friends, you know? I just did all that and I didn't have to type all those things out. But that's just some cool keyboard shortcuts that you can use with VS Code. And apparently Free Code Camp has a lot of the same ones. So you can learn those as you're doing Free Code Camp. And trust me, that will make you much more productive when you're a programmer. Keyboard shortcuts are, are the way to go when you wanna get, get stuff done quickly. So as you can see, I didn't have to type all those values out. I just used the alt key and selected everything that I wanted to do just like you saw. All right, on to the next thing. Check radio buttons and check boxes by default. You can set a checkbox or a radio button to be checked by default using the checked attribute. To do this, just use the word checked inside of an input element, for example. Input, type radio, name, test name, and checked. And that's all we gotta do. So it's saying here, set the first of your radio buttons and the first of your checkboxes to be checked by default. So we're gonna go here, that's the first one. And then what is that? It's two radio buttons. And then this one's the other one here. We're gonna just put it right here and then we're just gonna do checked. I'm doing the same shortcut that I've been using. You can go manually there if you don't want to, but I've been using the alt key like crazy because it just saves me a bunch of time, so why not? Uh, nest many elements within a single div element. Div is, you're gonna, div is gonna be your best friend for the most part. Uh, you're gonna be using a lot of divs when you're working with HTML. Uh, div is also known as division element. It is a general purpose container for other elements. The div element is probably the most commonly used element in HTML. Uh, just like non-self-closing, uh, div can open an element. Div, that. Just like any other non-self-closing element, you can open a div element with the div, with the brackets, and close it. Just the same syntax that we've been seeing in, in, in most of the stuff we've been doing up until this point. Uh, nest your things cats love and things cats hate all within a single div. Try putting your opening div tag above the things cats love paragraph element and your closing tag after the closing ol tag. So they want the closing tag here. Oh, okay, they, they've even spaced it out for us. So this is easy peasy. You're gonna put a div right here and then you're gonna close off your div right here. And then now, as you can see, this div is containing all of these items that are in it. So this is, this is the parent element, and then these are the children, and then those are the children of the ordered list, which would be the grandchildren of the div. And kind of understanding that that family tree structure is, is something that you're gonna have to get used to. Um, it's terminology that's often used uh, when you're trying to like get through objects and you know parent-child relationships and all stuff like that. So that's just terminology that you'll get used to uh, hearing things called like siblings and and whatnot and just referring to everything as a family member. So if you don't have family, now you do with code. Code can be your family. All right, let's run that test. That development wrapped it all up. Ooh, look at that, we're getting close here. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay, so we're gonna declare a doc type. It's so funny, it's been a long time since I've actually had to declare a doc type that, that I'm like, oh man, I forgot how to actually do this. I know it's exclamation mark doc type, but I don't know all the syntax, right? At least I don't really remember it because I use frameworks and I haven't made an HTML file from scratch in a really long time. So here we're gonna create, a, we're gonna declare a doc type. The challenge so far has been cover specific HTML elements and their usage. However, there's a few elements that give overall structure of your page and should be included in every HTML document. At the top of your document, you need to tell the browser which version of HTML your page is using. HTML is an evolving language and is updated regularly. Most browsers support the latest spec specification, blah, 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 blah. All right, to tell the browser this information by adding the doc type uh, tag at the first line and the version uh, for HTML5 is doc tag with uh, doc type with the uh, exclamation mark in front of it. Uh, the uppercase is important, especially in older browsers. The HTML is not case sensitive. Uh, next to the rest of it is going to be your HTML tags and then your header tags. Are they going to get into that? All right. So basically it wants me to declare my doc type. So I swear I'm going to, I'm going to type this right. Let me move my mouse and keyboard a little bit because it's kind of driving me nuts. And I think I'm off by a, a hair and I'm going crazy. So then we're going to, we're going to do doc type and close that off. And then I'm going to. Oh, I, I think I need to uh, make sure I do this and HTML. And then we're gonna do, does it want me to do HTML tags and then wrap around your H1. Uh, so add a, a doc type blank page code under it and then opening HTML, which wrap around an H1. Okay, so then it just wants me to do HTML here. So here's your HTML tags. If I can actually write HTML and then we'll just close that off. I don't know why that indentation is so janky. Let's do that. That's shift tab by the way. And then an H1 tag, is that what it wanted? So you can always read down here too what they want and then wraps an H1 element. So and then I don't know if they want me to put anything in the H1. I'm just gonna leave it like that and see what it does. All right, that's all it wanted. So, oh, look at that. I think we only got probably one more question left. So define the head and body of an HTML element. Uh, you can add another level of organization to your HTML document within the HTML tags with your head and body elements. Any markup with information about your page would go into the head and then the markup of your content is what is displayed to users, goes into your body. Metadata elements like links, link meta, title and style typically go inside your head. So this is how you should commonly see HTML structured here. We have the doc type at the top, HTML wraps your head and your body. So this is the hierarchy that you want. You have, uh, you have to make sure that you do this like this. If not, your, your, your stuff's probably not going to work. So, uh, it wants us to add a head and a body. So we're going to do head, and then I'm just gonna close it off here. And then we're just gonna do that, break that here. I'm gonna move that guy up here. Now, if you're seeing me do a lot of my, my keyboard shortcuts and whatnot, just know that, that you can do all this manually. I'm doing it quicker because I know I have a lot of different keyboard shortcuts and I basically move that title up with alt and up. It's, it's just stuff I'm used to doing. So if I do that too fast, just know that the way that I'm structuring it is what you want. And if you would have typed that, you could have easily just copy, cut this out and moved it up um, that way. But I'm just using shortcuts to make it a little bit quicker. So then our title goes in the head there and then we're gonna want the body, which is a sibling to head. And then I'm gonna do a line break there. I'm gonna do body here. I'm gonna close off the body tag. And then we're gonna take this stuff here. I'll go ahead and copy and paste it, or I'll cut it, I'm sorry. I'm gonna cut that. Let's clean this up a little bit here. And then we're gonna just paste that right there. And that looks like what they're asking for. And let's see, yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that, we're done, completed, HTML. It probably was like an hour or so. I promise I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna donate some money, uh, and you should too. If if you if you find it useful, it's free. It's pretty awesome. I totally totally recommend 
that you check out free code camp they don't charge you anything and while they do ask for donations remember they are a nonprofit organization and it goes to a good cause it's not it's not just that they're just asking for money just because you're using their service they're asking for it so that it can stay up and running and they can allocate that those funds to where they need to go to create keep this project going and I think it's pretty cool. So that's it for now. That's gonna be the HTML and HTML5 section of Free Code Camp for the responsive web design portion. Uh, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the next video, which is gonna be the introduction to basic CSS. And I'm gonna run through it just like I did. Make sure to give me some feedback too. I wanna make these videos good. I'm gonna start this as a series. This is gonna be the first part of this series. And I just wanna see how people like it and if there's anything that I can do to improve it. With all that said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks on learning how to code and become a self-taught programmer and maybe you know follow along with me while I do free code camp. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.